Hopefully you pulled up an older session. You don't need to create a brand new session uh, for what we're doing. We're just looking at, we're going to be looking at some time-based effects so we don't have to create anything new. And uh, if you like, you don't even have to open up a session. I prefer if you did uh, so you can kind of follow along and, and, and practice this uh, little exercise uh, as I'm doing it. Okay, so let's first ask ourselves, what is a reverb? That's something we're going to find out right now. It's very, it's actually a very simple little concept. What Essentially what a reverb is, is a simulation of a room's uh, ambient sound. Okay, uh, so a rever reverb is just going to simulate the component of the sound that results from reflections from the surrounding walls or objects. Pretty simple to understand. Uh, let's go ahead and bring up a plugin for reverb. Get a better idea how to use reverb with music. We're going to go to Dverb, and here we are. We're looking at the classic Dverb. Uh, it's been in Pro Tools for quite some time now. Uh, really great effect. It's been used on plenty of albums, plenty, plenty of songs, and uh, you're going to be working with this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and explain all these little parameters right here, what each little function does, so you can work uh, with this reverb a, a little bit easier. Okay. Cool. Uh, so the first thing that we got right here is the output. Now, what the output is is exactly how loud is the old, you know, the your end result sound after using the reverb. Okay. So you're going to actually see that right here. Even if you're not even using any reverb at all, you'll see, you know, pretty much your sound level. That's basically all it is. It's just the sound level. Now, below that, what you have is the input. Now, this is uh, pretty much the sound before any reverbs applied. That's all, that's all this is. Now, what the mix is, uh, is, is the blend of, I guess, wet and dry sound. So dry would be just the unaffected uh, track or signal that's coming through. And then uh, wet would be part of the mix, which would be how much reverb is actually in use. You know, how much is it blended in, you know? So that would be this right here. Now, this you don't want to go all crazy with unless you're really trying to go for an extreme effect. You really want to go ahead and uh, play your track listen to it nice and you know nice and low probably solid or something like that and then just you know slowly move a you know slight little increments until you get to that sweet tone it's not too much you know and it's not too little you don't hear anything at all you want to just kind of ease into it now what the algorithm is is exactly what is this reverb trying to simulate you know is it trying to simulate a hall a church a plate effect which would be kind of like a, a quick reflective sound, uh, you know, different types of rooms. We have two rooms here, so, you know, imagine different room sizes and, and shapes. And then you have an ambient uh, space and then a nonlinear space as well, okay? Right below that, what you'll see is uh, something called size. So let's say we have it on church, and you know, let's imagine it's just a small church. And what we'll change here is the decay, so how long this effect is actually going on for, how long is the... the uh, reverb going on for that's what the decay is it's a you know medium church you'll see this go up a little bit a little bit longer effect and a large church you'll have a much longer decay now the next thing we have right here is the diffusion now what the diffusion is is how reflective there are how much reflection is going on in this uh reverb you know if it, is it very reflective you know and it's a diffusing a lot of the sound or is it not so reflective and it's uh, you know not diffusing too much sound where you're where you're getting more of the reverb without having I guess some sort of artifacts of uh, objects or sense of objects inside the room okay so uh, again the, the, the decay is how long the reverb lasts for is it short is it uh, pretty long that's what this is okay and this is one of those especially one of the parameters that you really want to you know, move pretty slowly until you get that effect that you like. You know, you don't want to embellish it too much. And, you know, infinity would be kind of, you know, ridiculous, uh, unless that's the effect you're trying to go for. Uh, and then you also have, you know, just milliseconds, which you probably would even be able to hear the reverb would be too, too quick. I mean, you might be able to, but it'd be pretty quick. Now, what the pre-delay is, is how long does it take before the reverb effect is actually on? So is it is it very quick? Does it take a while? You know, it's a, another one of these parameters that you really want to just kind of ease into until you hear that that sweet tone that you're looking for, that sweet reverb effect that you're looking for. Now these two I'm going to kind of lump together: the high filter cut and the low pass filter. Now what these do is effectively um, 
help with the tonality of the reverb. You know, if you adjust this, you can make it sound really bright, or you can make it sound very damp and dark. Uh, you know, and you know, it really depends on what type of sound you're looking for. Let's say if you're uh, want to make it seem like you're at a church, but the church is made of uh, marble on the inside and it's really bright sounding, uh, you would adjust this uh, to have, you know, more of a bright tonality. Uh, if you want it to seem like a church again, but maybe a church that is, you know, more dark and damp and it's made of, uh, of wood, you can go ahead and adjust these two parameters to give it that effect as well. Okay? So these, these are a lot of things that you can, uh, you know, really experiment with and you don't want to go too extreme again, you kind of just ease into all of these parameters to get the tone that you're looking for. Awesome. Let's go ahead and uh, try another effect here. Explore another one. We're going to actually take a look at delay. I'm going to open up the air dynamic delay. All right, cool. So this one's a little bit simpler to understand. The first thing we're going to be looking at right here is the delay right here, this this knob right here. Now you have a sync option. Now what this does is it actually syncs it to the tempo. Uh, using the sync function can be pretty fun and uh, you know pretty easy to use, especially if you're doing something like let's say electronic music where you want things to happen uh, like right on the measures, you could go ahead and effectively uh, you know do it every second bar or every four bars uh, and or you could do you know every bar. You'll, you'll hear the delay actually occur. Okay, that's what this is. Now, if you don't want to do this, you want to have a more of a natural feel, you could also kind of ease into the delay amount for response right here. Just kind of dial it in yourself manually. That's actually something I would actually prefer, you know, rather than, this is a little bit more, I would find like a predetermined kind of stock or uh, almost like a like preset type of deal going on there. Now right below that you have what is called the feedback. Now this is how many times this delay will occur. You know, how many times will it repeat itself, okay? And again, it's one of these things where if you do that, it's gonna be repeating itself like crazy and you know, probably won't sound too good. So it's another one of these things where you just kind of ease into it and you just get the des desired amount, okay? So you'll listen to the track, you'll solo your track and just kind of ease into it. Okay, right next. What we're going to go ahead and take a look at is this area right here with this delay. And then you have the left and right ratio. So this is kind of like saying, where's the delay being panned to? You know, left or right? You know, you get to decide that. Okay? And same with the stereo width. Now, what the stereo width will do is, you know, essentially make it, you know, more or less narrow. Okay? That sound. So you, you, you really want to ease into these uh, you know, parameters. You don't want to make things too extreme and too harsh because you know what? That's actually not really pleasant to the listener. You know, they, want, they want to hear subtleties. They want to, you know, the more you hear subtleties, the more you're trying to re-listen to that song so you can notice you know, every simple little thing. It's kind of like a compressor. If you compress you know, a song or, or sounds you know, too high, there's no dynamics, there's nothing interesting about it, you get kind of like a listener's fatigue. So you want to keep everything subtle, keep it interesting. Let's go ahead and take a look at the EQ. Now, the EQ area, what this is going to do is going to help you uh, affect the tonality of the uh, delay. Okay, so you know, low cut, uh, you know, I guess EQ right here is kind of filtering out some some frequencies here, and same with the high cut as well. Okay, right beneath that, what you have is the envelope modulation. Now, what this is, uh, the rate, it's basically like speed, like how, how long before the envelope mod modulation actually occurs, okay? Feedback, it's uh, how many times this uh, signal will be repeated, the envelope, uh, you know, signal will be repeated, and then the mix, it's pretty much like the mix uh, in the other knobs, is how much of that effect is actually in the mix, okay? So you get to decide that. Right above here, what you have is the feedback mode. Now we know what mono is. It's just like you know, kind of more of a direct sound. Stereo is going out of left and right. Now cross cross is kind of interesting, uh, and I would say you know maybe kind of play around with cross a little bit and, and, and hear how this sounds. Essentially, it's going to give you this ping pong effect. Uh, you know, it's a stereo effect where 
the delay happens to bounce on the left side and then bounce back on the right, left, right, left, right. Uh, it's and it's pretty interesting. Um, it's it's a really nice effect. You might want to check that one out. Right below that, what you have is a mix, and that's how much of the effect is actually being blended into your initial sound. Okay, it's like that wet dry uh, mix again. Okay, this would be uh, pretty much you're listening to the original sound. This would be now it's activated, and this would be okay. Like how much of this is uh, of this effect is actually going into that uh, original sound? Okay, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at chorus. Okay, it's another one of these uh, really cool time-based uh, effects or plugins that, that's in here. So let's take a look at modulation chorus. Here we are. So we got your rate. Now what the rate is, is uh, the speed of the chorus effect. Now if you're wondering what a chorus is, um, actually what it does is it actually subjects the, sounds, the sound to a series of short time delays and mixes them. So the, imagine like it multiplies the sound and then delays it just a little bit, sets it out of phase, maybe detunes it just a little bit uh, so that you get this uh, chorus type of effect. It's, uh, imagine like singers or something like that. If you have one singer, you could tell the, you know, that there's just one person singing. Now when you have three people singing and they're all singing the same note at the same exact time, what will happen is that even if they're all singing, let's say, uh, like a C sharp or something like that, and they all start at the same time, what will end up happening is not all of the C sharps will be exactly the same out of all three voices. They'll be slightly out of tune of each other. Even if they're really great singers, they'll be just ever so slightly out of tune with each other. And one might actually begin a little like microseconds before the other one won't be a little like microseconds, you know, after. And that's how you get this uh, a bigger effect, actually. And you can do this with, you can give this type of effect to your tracks as well. Okay, now what the rate is in chorus, what, what this does is actually is the speed of the chorus effect. Okay, so you know, this would be pretty much uh, not too noticeable, it would be pretty quick. This would be, uh, you know, a little bit longer, and you'd be able to, you know, hear the, the effect of that as well. Okay, so you, this is another one of these knobs where you just want to ease into it. You'd solo your track and just kind of ease into it until you hear what you like, what you're looking for. Now below that, what you have is the depth. Now what the depth is right here is how long this effect lasts. Okay, so is it you know very quick? Is it you know much longer? You know you decide that again. It's like one of these things you ease into. Uh, you, you're going to start probably at the you know obviously at the factory default and you know kind of see where your your sound in regards to the depth should should land should lay. Now, what you have next is the chorus right here, this chorus area, and the feedback. Now, the feedback is kind of like the delay, is how much of the effect is actually repeated. Okay? Pretty easy to understand. It's just like the regular delay. Now, what you have next is, uh, after that, is the pre-delay. What the pre-delay is how long before the effect actually happens. Okay? You know, does it happen, you know, pretty much right at the same time? You know, you hear the the track sound, right at the track sound, you hear the chorus effect already activated. Or does it kind of, you know, more subtly come into it? Okay? This would be kind of like harshly. This would kind of be more like it eases into it. Now, this is, uh, you know, obviously delayed, and you can tell that it happened after the initial sound. Okay, right below that, you have the LFO. Uh, what the LFO is a low frequency oscillation. If you're wondering what this is, uh, so these are essentially like waveforms. Uh, it's an oscillator, and you get to choose from two different waveforms. You have a triangle waveform. You have your sine waveform. Okay. So this is gonna uh, affect, I guess, pretty much like the the tonality, the pitch, or not really the pitch, more like just a, the overall tone of it. Now, what you have after that is the left-right phase. What the left-right phase is, is um, you know, just essentially, you know, where in the stereo space are you hearing the sound from, okay? And then, of course, you have your mix. So how much of the effect is being blended into your sound? 
So what your job is to do now is to go ahead and experiment with all these different effects that are in Pro Tools. Really try to hone in your skills and just have fun. Thanks for watching this video. And if you're watching this video and you're not currently enrolled to the Recording Connection, this is only a small taste of what you could be learning in our program. The Recording Connection provides all of our students with industry standard software, like Pro Tools, to take your engineering skills to the next level. We also provide books with excellent lesson plans, a professional studio engineer who will mentor you and show you how to operate real studio equipment, and so much more. With the Recording Connection, getting finances a breeze. We have many different tuition options, so getting hooked up at a studio near you is fast and easy. For more information, check out www.recordingconnection.com. And of course, I'll catch you guys on the next video.